to an NBC News exclusive now involving Ginny Thomas, a big figure in right-wing activism, who reportedly pushed to try to overturn the results of the legitimate 2020 election, wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, and self-identified cult member turned anti-cult activist, question mark? Yeah, that piece of the story starts back in the time of Jazzercise and Duran Duran back in the 80s. Ginny Thomas, you see her in 1986 on your screen, realized her involvement with the group Lifespring was problematic. Lifespring, remember, advertised training seminars to help participants unlock almost superhuman potential. Then she was apparently what, what's called deprogrammed, a controversial way to unlearn what she picked up at Lifespring. After this, Thomas became an anti-cult crusader, even helping out with workshops for congressional staffers to fight groups like the one she'd been a part of. And with that background, people who knew her back then are scratching their heads now, telling us they don't get how Thomas reconciles that past with some beliefs she's got in common with QAnon today, with lawmakers on both sides of the aisle calling QAnon itself a cult. NBC News reached out to both Jenny Thomas and Justice Clarence Thomas. Neither responded. I want to bring in now the NBC News political reporter who's among the bylines on that story, Alan Smith, who worked on this along with our Alex Seitzwald. Alan, we're glad to have you on. Talk to us a little bit about your reporting, what you based it on, and then what you're hearing now from people who knew Ginny Thomas back then, because that seems to be kind of the key part of this. Dug into this after the Washington Post uh, first reported those text messages she, she sent to Mark Meadows. Uh, really with some outlandish conspiracy theories, including that, uh, you know, Democrats were going to be sent to Guantanamo Bay for military tribunals uh, about, about two days after the 2020 election. Uh, we had kind of, you know, begun some level of investigation and found, uh, you know, this cult and anti-cult uh, activist experience in, in Ginny Thomas's past. Um, she actually became, you know, not, not just someone who was deprogrammed after being in this group Lifespring, but someone who really jumped headfirst into fighting cults afterwards. Uh, she was someone who, you know, was a part of organizing multiple training sessions for congressional staffers. She even, you know, did some sort of emceeing for a dinner that the Cult Awareness Network put on in Washington, D.C. in 1989. Um, and it's interesting listening to her at the time because she's saying things you know, like, I know that what led me into this cult, it's, it's something that's still here with me today, and I'm trying to figure out what it is about me that made me susceptible to falling into such a group. And for people who knew her at the time, it was very interesting to contrast their experiences with her then uh, to seeing her espouse some of these conspiracy theories about the election now. What stood out to you the most, Alan, as you were putting this reporting together? I mean, in, in speaking to one person who helped... Uh, helped Ginny in organizing a training session for congressional staffers back in 1988. She said, uh, this, this person said something really striking to me, which was, uh, you know, Ginny was someone who had escaped a cult, and now it looks like they're someone who's fallen into a cult again. Um, so that sentiment really stood out to me. But again, there were, there were some individuals who we spoke with who were still kind of at the forefront of the, the cult awareness world now who said there are some differences between QAnon and what Jenny Thomas was involved in in the 80s. Uh, namely, they said that QAnon is, is something that sort of reinforces existing beliefs that a person has. Uh, whereas what Ginny was involved in was more of the, you know, getting directly sucked into to a group that's promising you uh, you know, untapped potential about your future. And to be clear, Alan, no response, right? No comment from Ginny Thomas nor from Justice Thomas? No comment. I, uh, we had tried to reach out to Ginny Thomas for uh, a number of months now, actually, uh, and, and we're not able to hear back. And uh, through, through the Supreme Court, Justice Thomas did not respond either.